Hello and welcome back to week 5 unit 2 of the Open SAP course Introduction to Statistics for Data Science. In this unit we'll look at the normal distribution in more detail. In many cases data tends to, to a central value with no bias left or right. This is called a normal distribution. The normal distribution is often called a bell curve because it looks like a bell or referred to as the Gaussian or Gauss or Gauss-Laplace um, distribution. It's, very, it's a very common distribution, a continuous probability distribution. In the slide you can see an example where the yellow histogram shows some data that um, follows the normal distribution. Not perfectly, but closely. Normal, normal distributions are important in statistics and are often used in the natural and social sciences to represent real values and uh, real valued va random variances whose distributions are not known. It is a theoretical distribution with the mean, median and mode positioned at the uh, same point which is the exact centre of the distribution. It's a unimodal frequency distribution curve, a bell shape with a single peak in the center. This means, um, this means most of the values are clustered in the center around the mean or median. It's symmetrical about the mean with half of the uh, distribution um, on each side of the mean. The total area under the normal distribution is equal to 100%. It's asymptotic, meaning that the two tails of the curve fall, um, fall and extend indefinitely in both directions, but never touching the x-axis. Thus, it has infinite range. The location of a normal distribution is determined by the mean and the spread, and the spread is determined by the standard deviation. Distance away from the mean is measured in standard deviations also known as z-scores. You've learned that the standard deviation is a measure of how spread out numbers are. The standard, uh, the standard deviation enables you to say that any value is likely to be within one standard deviation, so 68 out of 100, um, very likely to be within two standard deviations, which would be 95 out of 100, or almost certainly within three standard deviations representing um, 997 out of 1,000. The number of standard deviations from the mean is also called the standard score, sigma or z-score. To convert a value to a standard score, the, the z-score, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. This is called standardizing and the formula is shown on the slide. Here is an example using the, the standard normal distribution. In a recent data science test you did really well and scored 1.5 standard deviations above the average. How many students scored lower than you? From the graph, you can see that between 0 and 1.5 standard deviations, um, the percentage population is 19.1, plus 15, plus 9.2, which equals 43.3%. Less than 0 is 50%, the left half of the curve. Therefore, in theory, the total less than yours is 50%, plus 43.3, which is 93.3%. That's a very good result. The empirical rule states that for a normal distribution, nearly all of the data will fall within three standard deviations of the mean. The rule is also called the 68, 99.7 rule or the three sigma rule. The empirical rule is often said in, uh, used in statistics for forecasting, especially when ob uh, obtaining the right data is difficult or impossible to get. The rule can give you a, a rough estimate of what your data collection um, might look like if you were able to survey the entire population. This rule applies generally to a random variable x following the shape of a normal distribution. The rule doesn't apply to distributions that are, are not 
normally distributed, but you can apply it to other kinds of distributions using um, Chebyshev's theorem. The z-score can be used to indicate if a measurement is deemed to be an outlier. Observations with z-scores greater than 3 in absolute values are considered outliers. For some highly skewed data sets, observations with z-scores greater than 2 in absolute values may also be outliers. However, the presence of one or more outliers in a data set can inflate the computed values of the standard deviation. However, it is unlikely that an error observation would have a z-score larger than absolute 3. In a previous lesson, you were introduced to box plots. In contrast to z-scores, the values of the quartiles used to calculate the intervals for a box plot are not affected by the presence of outliers. In an experiment, suppose that a sample is obtained containing a large number of observations, where each observation is randomly generated in a way that does not depend on the values of the, the other observations, and that the arithmetic, arithmetic average of the observed values is calculated. If this procedure is performed many times, the central limit theorem says that the distribution of the average will be um, closely approximating, uh, approximated by a normal distribution. The central limit theorem establishes that when independent random variables are, at, are added, their probability, their properly normalized sum tends towards a normal distribution, even if the original variables themselves are not normally distributed. The theorem is a key, i.e. central concept, because it implies that probabilistic and statistical methods that work for normal distributions can be applicable to many problems involving other types of um, distributions. A simple example of this is that if you find, if you flip a coin many times, the probability of getting a, a given number of heads in a series of flips will approach a normal curve with a mean equal to half the total number of flips in each series. In summary, the normal distribution is a very commonly encountered continuous probability distribution. The characteristic of the normal distribution, the characteristics of the normal distribution are mean equals median equals mode, symmetry about the center, 50% of values less than the mean and 50% greater than the mean. And when we calculate the standard deviation, we find that generally 68% of values are within one standard deviation. 95% of values are within two standard deviations of the mean. And finally, 99.7% values, 99 of the values are within three standard deviations of the mean. The empirical rule states that for a normal distribution, nearly all of the data will fall within three standard deviations of the mean. The central limit theorem establishes that when independent random variables are added, their, their properly normalized sum tends towards a normal distribution, even if the original variables themselves are not um, normally distributed. In the next unit, we'll, we'll consider kurtosis and skewness.